Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Flavor of the Week, brought to you by Banditos, fresh made daily. In Flavor of the Week, Kyle sits down with one of our local priests over four different episodes to sample variations of a favorite food or drink while they discuss the ins and outs of life as a priest. This is Kyle. Oh, you just broke a stick. How do they how do they get another stick back? He went back to the bench. So the referee's hand is we got they got uh-huh. the penalty box. And they just they just somebody threw out a stick for him to play with? Yeah, so the equipment manager on the left end of the bench there has all the sticks behind him. So he'll reach out and hand it to him. Oh, okay. This is Kyle Hyman. I am here with Father Nathan Maskell at a Fort Wayne Comets hockey game. We are watching they're playing the Wichita, what are they? The Wichita Thunder. Wichita Thunder. This is our flavor. It's hockey flavor. It's hockey flavored, yeah. <laughs> Part four, though, already yes. in the first period. That doesn't normally happen. We're, we're wrapping things up here so we can enjoy the game. Still zero to zero score. But while we're watching the game, I want to talk about your work with Catholic schools. You mentioned you went to Catholic school your whole life. So I guess, yeah, that's really been part of my passion for Catholic schools is that it's been a big part of my story, going to St. Charles, grade school, Bishop Dwanger, high school. I guess I can throw St. John's New Haven in there since I went there for kindergarten. Oh, St. Okay. Charles didn't have a kindergarten at that point. Uh huh. And then, um, yeah, as a seminarian working in almost every school that I've been assigned to at a parish, last year working at Holy Family in St. John's in South Bend there. Uh huh. And each school is a totally different experience. Oh, you were down but at St. Joe in Decatur. I was in St. Joe in Decatur for a year. And I was on the school board. A lot of people were so excited that you were out there greeting people at drop off. and So that was my classrooms. first time for a full year in a school uh-huh. without having to like write papers or actually do any of the homework of a student. So I <laughs> just yes. had a blast. And really, I came to love it because in each school, you have this unique environment where not only the teachers, but the parents and the students really come together in a very special way when that really helps strengthen the education the formation that the teachers give guided by the principal guided by the pastor Uh but it's a very special way that we teach the faith in decatur that was as a seminarian for your pastor i was there as a seminarian helping out with though literally about everything Uh so how much of that are you able to do now as a priest a little bit less Uh but i still like to be involved it's an easy way to be engaged with the students kind of see their parents i shoot more for afternoon dismissal at st pius if i can Mm -hmm. high school it's kind of a different beast if i'm there it's people go out so many different doors and you're walking past right actually once a week we have a mass after school as well oh okay and so you're chaplain there so i'm chaplain along with father dan neeser okay Um, the bishop this year was actually able to get two priests at each of the high schools so I don't know if that's happened before in our diocese or certainly not in a long time, but that really helps us out, especially being assigned yeah. almost full time at a parish as well and right. big parishes of that. So did that come with the assignment at St. Pius that it Bishop did, said, yes. want you to go to St. Pius and be the Marian chaplain? Yeah. So it had happened uh priest that I followed, Father Eric Bergner, he was chaplain at Marian High School. Oh, okay. So those high schoolers are so inquisitive and... Uh-huh really have so many good questions because of the different things that they're learning. Sure. And are really able to put together a lot of that integration between subjects that, again, was part of my story of that Catholic culture and forming that. Mm -hmm. Because it is so important not to just keep it segmented like it's... One of the terms is trying to be a cafeteria Catholic. Right. Um, Oh, and we had something interesting there. The goalie pushed off the net from the moorings. Those are those pegs. And so the play had to be blown dead while the Comets are on a power play. Does that happen very often? Fans are not happy, but that does not happen very often at all. It seems like it would happen. You're just ramming into that a lot. I mean, they're holes cut out into the ice. And so rubber pegs, but they're pretty firm. So they stay in there pretty well. Shots ring off the posts as well pretty often. Yeah. But they are meant to fall off so that people aren't injured. So what kind of questions do the high school students come up with? Do you have like a, a most common question or your uh, favorite one to, to talk about? I'd say there'd be two categories. One of kind of a miscellaneous category of kind of what some of the current topics are. But also 
steps about preparation. Uh, so preparing for either another level at the high school or looking forward to college or maybe beyond and even into a job. Uh-huh. How some of the stuff that they learn can be applied then. Okay. Or maybe that they're feeling like this doesn't really matter or that there's not. And sometimes that's a very common feeling to be able to share with others, you know, some of this stuff doesn't really seem to register with me or it doesn't really seem to be something that I'm very familiar with. Right. It's we- such a interesting place, though, to be having these open and frank conversations about like what people were doing and how they can live their faith better. And that's really one of the strong themes during Lent of that reconciliation, both with God and with our neighbor. Mm-hmm. We'll be having our school penance service. Well, it already happened by the time the, this airs. Uh-huh. But really, the things we learn don't just stay in Lent, uh, but they're for our entire life as well. So how we can continue to take those moments of growth with us, just like we do in so many of the other areas. Sure. Um, our faith is guided by God in that special way of that ongoing conversation by someone who knows us so well. So are the students doing a lot of discernment, trying to figure out what God's calling them to as far as occupation, religious life, um, married life? I think the goal is to be very involved in that. I think that most students would be at the very initial stage of that. Yeah. Because a lot of the stuff is new. They're also meeting people from all over the city. Uh Um, Generally, they're the same area, but um, having those different experiences and really different kinds of friendships, get them asking those important questions and seeing how that can be lived out among your peer group. Because before then, it's been with your parents or with some role model or adult role model that you look up to. So being able to do that within those peer groups, within those friendships is very important for taking your faith to the next step. Yeah. So between an elementary school and a high school, I'm sure there's just a ton of extracurricular activities. There's games and plays and stuff every night of the week. Are you Uh, able to make it to much of that? Every night of the week. Yes. I try and make it to a few each week. Oh, so, that was a close shot. So do you divide things up with you and Monsignor Bill? And So, yes. Yeah, so we put together a month schedule at a time. And normally we do two or three months at a time. So we'll have masses, but we'll have all the other things. The parish events that are on the calendar scheduled out. So like right now we're doing some Lenten series, different marriage prep programs, adults and children's formation. And then things like you mentioned, the school board, the finance council, the pastoral council. Yeah. In addition to the priests get together and meet a few times a year as well, Uh which are really great opportunities because honestly, as priests, we see each other in passing, but we don't have a lot of time unless we really make the extra effort to really get together and really just have that conversation. We have been trying recently to get together on some Saturday nights with the priests in the South Bend area who are able to make it. Uh Uh-huh. So where do you do that? Um, normally Father Bill or one of the older priests will, uh, kind of get a group together and pick a restaurant. Okay. And how many priests will show up? Uh, anywhere from about four to, I think we had 15 once. So what do 15 priests talk about whenever they sit down for, for dinner together? <laughs> normally we break into groups of three or four, uh-huh. <laughs> um, and have those conversations. But I think it's kind of like, it's a lot closer to your friend groups that, than you might think. Um, We talk about things like with the church and the Uh church's calendar, just like any job you, any job, any vocation, uh, you want to be looking ahead. Right. But then really our hobbies, you'll have the group of athletes, the ones who are uh, (laughs) reading different kinds of books, Uh the ones who really want to dig more into scripture. We try not to talk shop too much around there, though. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Um. You know, we do share what's going on in our parishes from time to time, but really it's more of entertaining and supporting each other. Yeah, I imagine both are important. It's good to have like some time that you can brainstorm like, hey, what, what did you guys do for this for your RCA group or whatever? You know, like, how are you negotiating this with your school? And hey, I have this issue coming up. You know, it's nice to be able to bounce that off of other priests. And I've been talking to some of the priests who are younger, um, a little bit older than me, who are becoming pastors either their first or second assignments I mean, really trying to work together in those ways because we have a lot of the same or similar programs at all these parishes and really trying to work together, especially with some of the up and coming things like the youth and young adult groups. 
I know we have a marriage in Christ program uh, that we're trying to work with together. And actually, we're trying to get a partnership together with a Lutheran church in our area. We've been trying to do different events back and forth between each other just to share some ecumenical dialogue Uh and support each other on Christian living. And uh, marriage in Christ and young adult youth ministry is kind of an area we'd like to look at next to really see how we can pray together, how we can serve together. With all those conversations that really appeal to a wide group of people, really teach them about Christian living and really show them what the Catholic Church has to offer. Yeah. I feel like there's a lot going on at St. Pius. It's a very active parish. It's the second largest parish in the diocese, so I believe we have over 70 or 75 parish ministries, parish groups, things like that. So a number of those would be like the choir, <laughs> sure. uh, the youth group, things like that, but also small groups, uh, faith formation opportunities. Uh, we also started a group by Mark Hart called the 99. Uh huh. So kind of a focus on those who are faithful in the church but are kind of looking for... Uh, something else or a way to be involved and engaged in their faith in a little bit different way. How's that been going? I think it's going to be a very effective program. Um, We're kind of at the initial stages of getting our group together, and our staff is actually going through their program first. Okay. And then we're going to kind of put it out to other parishioners as well. You know, another way to support each other, to pray for each other, and really learn about different forms of prayer. Mm -hmm. But St. Pius is a parish we're trying to do a focused opportunity on the year of evangelization. Um, And so different opportunities to share and to spread the faith. Really what a loving relationship with Jesus looks like and how others experience it. And how we can be a part of that community, the body of Christ. So do you think that that would work as well with a, a small parish? The the 99? Oh, certainly. Um, Really just a small group that would get together to talk about matters of faith. I think it could be very successful in. All right. Well, this has been a lot of fun. We've still got some more hockey to watch. Yeah. It's almost the end of the first period and we're still got a zero, zero score. Yeah. So I imagine a lot is going to happen tonight that won't get recorded. And (laughs) I almost feel sad for the people who aren't here at this game. Yeah. (laughs) Wonderful. Good to spend time with you today, Kyle. And I look forward to seeing all of you out in our diocese. And thank you, Father Nathan Maskell, for joining me up in the cheap seats up here. Your flavor of the week, Fort Wayne Comets. So, Father Nathan, you got a mac and cheese and bacon sandwich? I believe that's what it's called. (laughs) It's good.